Homosexual marriage is a very controversial subject. The issue is a debatable because there is no true definition of marriage. More than half of opponents of gay marriage said that it's against the Bible and God states, if a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They must be put to death. Their blood will be put on their heads. Yes, it may seem as if God will condemn homosexuals and they should be put to death, but in the Bible, God also states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever has belief in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That seems as if whoever believes that he is real, he shall have a long and blissful life, and that he loves the world. Doesn't the world include everybody? One of the most controversial things about gay marriage is procreation. It can make a good argument. How many abortions are there by teenagers who practice unsafe sex? How many couples are infertile? One could say that procreation not happening with heterosexuals, that gay marriage will no way impede the future of the human race. Millions of gays are denied their right to make life or death decisions for a partner in a medical emergency. Instead, the hospital is required to call the injured person's family, even if they live five states away and hate their guts. Can you imagine how you'd feel if your wife was admitted to the hospital and you had literally no say in her care? I'd personally get mad enough to go protest outside. Gay couples are denied access to over 1,000 federal rights, including their rights to share property or to take time off work to care for an ill partner. Does that sound like America? If two people of the same sex are lucky enough to find true love, who are we to judge? Life is too short to deprive them of one of the most basic human rights, the right to love and to be loved. Spousal Benefits are where civil union and gay marriage begin to separate. A civil union has minimal legal implications behind it, which usually translate to a lack of many benefits that heterosexual couples take for granted, such as medical, dental, tax, child support, and life insurance. While civil unions may grant certain state-level benefits, no federal protections exist for them. This is perhaps the most predominant legally implicated rationale behind the need for gay marriage. Gay couples face a wealth of prejudice, including the assumption that gay men and lesbians are promiscuous and incapable of sustaining a com committed relationship. Look, all of us differ on what we think is right. I get that, but I also hope we can agree on some stuff, namely that no one should have to suffer just for being different. If that falls under your definition of right, then that's great. I think we can reach an understanding. If not, well that's your call, but the tide is turning, and one day your grandkids will look back at time and wonder why this legalization debate took such a ridiculously long time to prevail.